Hey everyone, Cricket World Cup is going on and I thought this would be a pretty good time to solve an SQL problem related to a cricket match. Now recently Naveen Kumar shared with me this problem in my email and it's a very simple problem but it's a very interesting problem. So in this video let us try to solve it. Now as you can see this is a problem statement. We have been given an input table. It has two fields, two columns, there is balls and then there are runs. And you can see that there are totally 120 records if you see from here. Okay, so it's basically representing one row for each ball. Okay, and since there are 120 balls, so we know that it's a T20 match because in a T20 match we have 120 balls, that is 20 overs, right? In each over, we'll have six balls. Now, in each ball, the number of runs scored is mentioned in this second column. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to write a query to find the total runs scored in each over. Okay, now I know that some of you guys would be thinking, okay, it's not mandatory that every over needs to have six balls because sometimes there can be more than six balls, right? But as for this problem statement, it is mentioned that each ball only has, or sorry, each over only has six balls, okay? So we need to assume this and then we need to solve our problem. So what we need to do is we need to find the total number of runs scored in each of the 20 overs in this match. Even before we get into solving this problem, there is one additional thing that we need to do and that is we need to come up with the input data set because as per this email, I was not shared the entire data set. Only this much information was given. So the very first task is to create a table with two fields and then insert 120 records. And I think the first column is pretty straightforward. It's just a unique record, unique value. But then the second row here or the second column here is basically the runs and it has to be randomly generated such that the values can be anywhere between 1 to 6 but not 5 because we know that in a cricket match every ball you can either score 1 run, 2 run, 3 run, 4 runs or 6 runs. You cannot score 5 runs, right? And that is what we need to populate in this table, okay? So that's our task number 1 to populate the input data. Once we have the input data ready, then we will think about solving this problem. Now, you're watching this video because you want to learn SQL, right? And you want to learn SQL probably because you want to get into data science or data analytics, etc. And we know that in order to get into data science or data analytics, SQL is very important. But SQL is not the only skill. Along with SQL, you will also have to learn probably Python, Power BI and few other skills. And it's not just about learning the skills. You will also have to build projects, portfolio, and you will need to know where to apply for jobs, how to apply for jobs, how to crack interviews, etc. Right? And this whole process can be very daunting, but you can simplify this process by taking up the data science course or the data science bootcamp by the sponsor of today's video, which is Odin School. Now, Odin School is an online platform that offers bootcamp related to data science, uh, web development, etc. And there are hundreds of people who have taken this bootcamp and have been able to get their dream job. Now, let's say you are someone who has a long career gap, maybe five years of career gap, 10 years, 15 years, etc. There are people who have taken this bootcamp from Odin School and were able to get their dream job. There are also people who were looking for their very first job, college graduates who are looking for their very first job, who are able to crack it with the help of these bootcamps done with Odin School. Now, there are also professionals who are already working, but they were working in the non-IT field and they were able to successfully dive into the IT field with the help of these bootcamps that were done by Odin School. And there are also people who were already working, but they wanted to uh, get a better job or a better salary or a growth in their career. And they took up this bootcamp and were able to successfully get their dream job. So there are a lot of success stories that you can read about yourself. And I'll leave a link to that success stories in the video description. Now, out of the many features that Odin School offers, some of the features that I would like to highlight are the boot camps that are conducted by Odin School are live and interactive classes. So you will have teachers assigned to you with whom you can discuss, clarify your doubts and get any assistance that you might need. Odin School offers job assistance, Odin School offers scholarships and Odin School also has a 10 day refund policy. So if you take up the bootcamp and you don't like it within the first 10 days, you can ask for a refund. So if you're looking for a data science bootcamp, then I would highly recommend to check out Odin School. You will find a link in the video description. So definitely check that out. And thank you Odin School for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back into our cricket match problem. Okay, so as I told you, the very first thing is to come up with the data set that we need to solve this problem. So I have created this table that is match underscore score. It has two fields, balls and runs, both are integers. And currently this table is empty as you can see. Now we need to load 120 records into this table, right? So I'm using PostgreSQL database and I'm using the PG admin tool. 
Now you can solve it using any database. But in PostgreSQL, if I want to generate few records, then I can easily do that by using a function called as generate series. So I can just say select star from generate series. And here I can just mention, let's say one to 10, okay, two arguments. And if I run this, you can see that it will generate 10 records starting from the first value one going until 10, right? But what I need here is 120 records as per our problem statement. So if I put from one until 120, and if I run this query, we can now see that it is actually generating 120 records and the values will be starting from one and it will go until 120. So each of these values will be unique. Okay. So I can easily rename this or give an alias to this field like balls. And here, if I just call it like balls, we can now see that I have basically got the first column in my input table, right? Because this was my input table, it had balls and runs. So I have got one of these fields already just by using the generate series function, right? The next thing that I need is I need to randomly generate the runs, right? In order to do that, I can use another function that is called as random. Okay. And if I just run this, now you can see that I am getting some values. These are decimal values or floating point values. And it's not exactly the values that I want because I know in cricket, every ball that you have, you can score few runs. So the runs can be one. You can score one run, two run, three runs, four runs or six runs. You cannot score five runs, right? Secondly, you can also have a dot ball. That means zero runs scored, right? I think I forgot to mention that before, but we can also have zero runs scored in a, in a ball, right? So what I need to do is instead of all these decimal values, I need to have a proper values here, proper runs that can be anywhere from zero, one, two, three, four, or six, right? Now, how do I do that? Here, I can see that these are randomly generated values. And as per this random function, I know that the minimum value will be zero and the maximum value would be 0 0.999 something, okay? It will never be one. So the values will always be between zero and one, excluding one, okay? Now, if I want to generate values that are ranging from zero, to six, the maximum would be six. What I can do is I can consider what is the possibility of the maximum value that would be 0 0.9, let's say. Okay. And if I multiply 0 0.9 by with six, that would give me something like five dot something, right? Maybe five dot four or five dot four dot something, right? It would never give me more than six, right? So I'm just going to do that, okay? I'm just going to multiply this with the value six, okay? And then whole of this, I'm for now, let's say I'm not going to use any other function. I'll just run this. Now we can see that I am getting here 0 0.7, 5.07, 4.5, 2 dot something. And if you go through each of these values, the maximum value you, you would find would basically be five point something. It would never be anything above six or six, okay? Because I'm multiplying it by six and this value will be maximum of 0 0.9, right? I hope you understand why I'm doing this by six, okay? And now in order to remove these decimal points, what I'll do is I'll just round these values, okay? So it will round the value to the nearest whole number, okay? So 5.8 would become six, whereas 3.1 would become three, okay? And now if I run this, now you can see that I am getting some values and it is five, one, two, zero, etc. So ideally the value should be zero until six. It should not be anything more than six. Now to verify that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this query here and I'll just do a group by. So I'll say runs. Okay, first I need to load this data into the table and then only I can run this, right? So first let me load this into the table directly. So here I'm just going to say insert into match score and I'll just run this. And you can see that 120 rows are inserted. If I look at the table, you can see that I have the 120 balls and the randomly generated runs here. Okay. Now let's verify if these randomly generated runs are exactly what I wanted. Okay. So I'll just do runs comma count of one. And here I'll say group by, oh, sorry, runs. Okay. Let's see what are the unique runs that we have generated. And now I can see that there are seven rows. So the unique rows are, or the values of runs are this one, two, six, zero, four, just to make it better, I'll just say order by runs. And if I run this, now you can see that it is zero, it's present five times, one runs were scored 22 balls. So out of the 120 balls, in 22 balls, one runs was scored, 
and then again two runs were scored also in 22 balls three runs were scored in 24 balls and four runs were scored in 22 balls five was scored in 13 balls and six was scored in 12 balls looks fine except for one problem that is five because in cricket in a ball you cannot score five runs you can score anywhere from zero to four and six but you cannot score five right so how do i eliminate this now in order to do that what i'm going to do is i'm just going to do a simple update so i'm just going to say update match score set runs equal to something where the runs equal to five so wherever the runs are five i want to change it to something now what is that something that something is we know in a cricket match most of the runs that would be scored would be either single or doubles right there would be limited boundaries four or six and limited threes right so i want this five to be replaced by either one or two and again i'm going to use the same formula that i used here so i'll just put this here but instead of multiplying by six i'll multiply it by two okay so the maximum value would be two now if i just run this and it is updated 13 rows and now if i check the group by now you can see that I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6. So the 5 is disappeared and you can see that 1 is present 29 balls. They scored 1 runs and out of the 120, 26 balls, 2 runs were scored. Okay. Now this seems like a valid data in my input table. Okay. So now we have the input table. So if I just run this, I say select star from my table and you can see that I have the data that I need. Okay, now let's try to solve it. Now what I need to do is I have the runs scored in each ball in that in that entire match, right? Or in that entire innings. What I want to do is I want to count the number of runs scored in each over. We know in cricket every over will have six balls, right? Okay, you can have more than six balls sometimes, but in this problem statement, it is clearly told that every over only has six balls. So we are going to treat this as an assumption. Okay. Now how do I count the total number of runs for every six balls. So the first six balls would be over number one. The second, the next six balls would be over number two. Okay. But looks like, am I missing any balls here or is this not proper? Let's do one thing. I'm just going to sort the data order by balls. I think probably the value is not sorted properly. Now, if I run this, now I can say that the first six ball belongs to over number one. And now you can see that I have the seven. So that means the next six ball belongs to over number two the next six balls belong to over number three and so on and so forth, right? And in each of this over, I need to count the total number of runs. So when you have this kind of a problem, can you imagine what concept of SQL could you use to solve this problem? Maybe you can think for a minute or pause this video and share me your solution in the comments below. I'm going to share my solution. So as soon as I looked at this problem, for me, there was only one solution that came to my head. And in fact, you can solve it in many different ways, but the solution that came to my head the first was to use the n-tile window function because in n-tile window function, we can segregate the rows into multiple buckets. So if I could just put each of these six rows into one bucket, the next six rows into the second bucket and then create other bucket for the next six rows and so on and so forth, I would end up with 20 buckets. Each bucket would have six rows, right? Or six balls. And then each of that bucket could be one of my over right so i'm just going to use that concept so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to maybe i'll remove this order by for now and i'll just say star and i'll say n tile and i need 20 buckets because 120 balls each bucket needs to have six records so i'll say n tile of 20 and then i'll say over and here i'll just tell i don't need to partition data data but i just need to sort the data order by balls okay and i'll just call this like overs Okay, if I run this, now you can see that the first six rows belongs to over number one, the next six rows belongs to over number two, the next six rows belongs to over number three, and if I go to the extreme end, and if I see the last six rows, or from here, the last six rows belongs to over number 20, and so on and so forth, right? So that means just by using the n tile window function, I have been able to segregate my data into 20 different buckets. Each bucket here is basically my over. So each over will have six rows. That is exactly what I wanted for this problem, right? Now, once I have got this, I can easily do a sum of these runs based on the value that is present in my overs column, right? How can I do that? I can just use simple group by, I can group the data based on overs and sum the number of runs, right? And that should be my final output. So I'm just going to do that. So I can either put this into a subquery 
or I can just put this into a CT. So what I'll do is I'll just use CT just that it becomes easier to read. So I'll say with CTE and I'll move this to the right. I'll open the parentheses. I'll close the parentheses here. And here I'm just going to say select star from CT. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll do a group by overs and I'm just going to copy this and I'll say sum of runs and this will be my runs per over okay and if i just run this now you can see that for each over i'm getting the runs but this is not sorted properly so let me just order it order by overs and if i run this now now you can see that i am having 20 rows so over number one 19 runs were scored over number two seven runs were scored over number three 18 was scored and over number 20 15 runs was scored right and this is my final output that i was looking for okay so i hope you like this problem i hope you understood the solution and i hope this problem was interesting if you did leave a comment below like the video and share the video with your friends thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one bye